Welcome investors. In this video, we're going to talk about the brand new position I just started in my long-term portfolio. As you can see in the title, I just bought more than $10,000 worth of this stock. And to be honest, that represents a very sizable position for me. It's the third largest position in my portfolio right now after High Tide and IMS because I strongly believe it recently reached the bottom and that the market is overreacting to some issues the company has been facing over the past year, which is why I entered so heavily. In this video, I'll tell you not only what the company does, but also the specific reasons why I believe this might be a multi-bagger opportunity, even in the short to medium term. Without further delay, the company I'm talking about is The Local, ticker symbol DLO. As you may see, the local has been suffering a lot over the past years in terms of stock's price, down almost 90% from its peak. This means that if it reaches that all-time high again in the future, it will be a 10 beggar from current prices, and I strongly believe that it shouldn't be trading this low. And let me tell you why. But first, let's understand what the company's business is. The local's mission is to enable global merchants to connect seamlessly with billions of emerging market users. They have a payment processing platform to facilitate online transactions from people paying in emerging markets currencies and companies from well-developed regions. In very simple terms, as you can see here in the list of some of its customers, Amazon, Dropbox, GoDaddy, Booking, Nike, Uber, etc. Imagine I'm like in Argentina and I want to buy a Dropbox subscription. I will pay in Argentinian pesos, but Dropbox obviously wants US dollars. And basically, the local facilitates this transaction process through its platform. It's not something completely innovative. There are plenty of other solutions like Adyen, Stripe, and even PayPal with its uh, Braintree payment system. However, it's an incredibly huge market, so there's more than enough space for many winners, especially in the emerging markets which are just beginning the digitalization process. The local has been growing insanely well. In 2019, the company only had $55 million in revenue, and this year it's on track to reach more than $800 million, all this while having very good bottom line and free cash flow margins. But why did its stock's price decrease so much if the company has been performing well? In my opinion, there are a few reasons for that. First, interest rates started to increase and the entire market went down. We all know that. Second, emerging markets currencies have been losing value against the US dollar, which kind of hurts the local business in the short term. Third, in 2022, Muddy Waters released a short report on the local, basically calling them a fraud. And a few months ago, they said they remained short on the stock. Fourth, the CEO left the position a few quarters ago. And finally, last quarter, the company missed analysts' expectations. Let me talk a little bit more about each reason now. Starting with interest rates, we all know that since late 2021, every growth stock has been punished due to the macroeconomic conditions. And in this case, I don't really think it's something to worry about for the local because the company has almost $700 million in cash and no debt. So it's even earning interest from its cash pile rather than paying interest on debt. Secondly, emerging markets currencies. That's clearly one of the biggest risks about investing in these kind of businesses, but I believe that the huge growth the company has will more than offset this risk over the long term. The fact that it's been happening in the short term doesn't mean it will happen in the long term, and as these regions become more and more developed, I think this risk will start to decrease. Also, the local holds its cash in US dollars, so the risk is really more about very short-term fluctuations. In my opinion, it doesn't affect the strength of the business that much, and over the long term, it doesn't affect the investment thesis. Thirdly, about the short reports, the local issued a report reviewing the short seller allegations, and I just can't believe the company is a fraud. I think Muddy Waters just chooses businesses with metrics that are somewhat confusing for non-experts or just regular dudes that do not know some particularities of uh, analyzing some financial statements and so on. And Muddy Waters just tries to make them look fraudulent without any merit. The local is a huge company. It's audited by PwC with huge clients all around the world. At least I was convinced by their response so I don't think we should pay too much attention to these short reports. It's just nice that we must learn to filter. 
but always remember that I can be wrong, so make sure to check the report by yourself and also the locals answer. Fourthly, the CEO leaving the company. And guys, this is what got me really excited. Maybe for you it doesn't make any sense at all, usually it's not good to see the founder and CEO stepping down, but the guy who took the position is Pedro Ardent, the former CFO of Mercado Libre. Pedro left an incredible position at one of the best, if not the best, companies in Latin America after 24 years working there. He was one of the guys that managed to grow Mercado Libre into the beast it is right now. And for those of you who don't know, Mali is one of my favorite companies ever in terms of corporate culture and long-term vision. And I believe Pedro Arndt knows the Latin American market dynamics like very few people do. And that's why I think it will be very successful at the local. It's also one of the reasons why I just can't believe the local is a fraud, as the short seller said. Pedro would never leave a position as CFO of Mercado Libre to join a company that's fraudulent. I could always be wrong, but I'm pretty sure he knows what he's doing and sees the potential of this fast-growing fintech company. Finally, about the company missing the analysts' expectations last quarter, the CEO justified this by saying that one of their largest customers renegotiated fees as the contract came up for renewal. Due to the high concentration of revenues from the top 10 customers, that ended up affecting the entire quarterly results. And even with this sudden decrease in gross profit margins due to this renegotiation process, the local didn't stop any planned investments because, and I quote, they have confidence that gross profit will eventually rebound and see these OPEX investments in capability building internal mechanisms and technology as strategic for the long-term success. This is what I believe Pedro, the new CEO, brought to the company. Most management teams act always thinking about meeting analysts' expectations rather than supporting the long-term success of the company. That long-term thinking is what Pedro brought to the local. He doesn't care about this quarter or the next one. He cares about where this company will be in 5-10 years. Having a lot of cash and no debt means that they can delay the bottom line profits a bit if the reason is investments to sustain the long-term cash flows of the business. And I believe this is the best way to manage a business, thinking in 5-10 years from now and not worrying about the analysts' expectations or what will happen to the stock's price next quarter. I do think that this long-term vision is what the local needs to be successful in these markets. All in all, I really think the market overreacted to an issue that's mostly a short-term one and that's happening to every company in the sector. The decrease in take rates has been happening to every single player and will inevitably stop in the long term. This is also one of the reasons why the market is consolidating right now, with many smaller players going bankrupt or trying to be acquired, as the CEO pointed out in the last earnings call. Having so much cash and no debt, along with very healthy free cash flow margins, puts the company in the very strong position to benefit from the upcoming market consolidation and even make some acquisitions to boost its growth at very attractive prices. Summing up the reasons that made me buy shares of the local, well, it's priced for failure while the business is very strong and, in my opinion, will continue to be in the long term. With a P ratio of 18 and an expected growth rate in earnings of around 35%, its PEG ratio or price to earnings growth ratio must be in the 0.5 to 0.6 range which for a company like this is just too cheap to ignore. Usually a peg ratio below one is considered cheap, so for a company growing like this, this in my opinion is very, very cheap. The entire sector is facing headwinds, it's true, but it's just a matter of time until things start to turn around. I believe in a few years we will look back and see today's prices as a massive opportunity. Then, I strongly believe in the new CEO, as I said, and his extensive knowledge about the Latin American market dynamics. Also, at current prices, its $200 million buyback program can buy about 10% of the company, which should put some buying pressure on the stock and maybe mark the $7 to $8 per share range as the bottom, at least in the short term. I think this is a super smart decision. The stock's price is too low right now and buying back shares is a fantastic way of using the huge cash pile the company has, showing investors how confident they are in the business. And finally, being one of the strongest players in the sector facing a consolidation phase, as I just explained, is very important for the long-term position of the company. 
which will inevitably benefit from competitors going out of business. I think this is quite logical. In conclusion, this is a very good business. I mean, not a perfect one, but with its long-term thesis right on track, but because of short-term issues, it's trading at ridiculously low levels. I believe this might be the bottom for the stock, as I already said, and I'm confident that the new CEO will prove to be the right guy to take this company to the next level over the long term. As you can see, I just invested around 10,000 euros in the local, which is just below $11,000, at an average price per share of $7.69. I'm looking forward to seeing the next quarterly results and we'll continue to cover the company here, so make sure you subscribe to the channel to follow the updates. That's all for today, guys. Thank you so much for watching and see you in the next one.